Not only is India home to one-fifth of the world's population, one half of those are children. The sights and sound of India absolutely took my breath away. But one thing moved me, perhaps more than any other. It was the countless faces of children. I mean, they're everywhere. I couldn't stop seeing into the eyes of the children as they walked the streets and the cities and the villages as well. Everywhere I looked, I saw the children. It was painful at times to look into their faces, and yet somehow it wasn't. The life of a typical Indian child isn't pretty. They have no education. They eat about one meal a day if they're lucky. And the average Indian child lives in a hut about the size of my bathroom at home. But in the midst of all of this chaos and noise, I was overjoyed to know that Christ for India was doing something about it. When Dad moved here in 1981 to start the seminary here, he had a vision to train young people, send them out all over India, all over the world, get them to multiply, and then expand the Christ Great Commission. Jameson told me while we were riding a bus, if Mrs. Titus sees a child on the street of the city, she will tell them to come home with her. Every day, 800 children attend school here at the Navajaveen Public School. Navajaveen means new life. These children are treated with amazing respect and dignity. They're actually treated as the sons and daughters of God that they really are. Each of the children I talked to were always a bit shy to speak at first. After coming here, I know who I came to know about God. And I too say, uh, if Jesus has met my personal Savior. There is a plan and purpose about this, that they help the people to go to Christianity. And it is good for that, that they come to know about Jesus. Vincat and Kurt's life doesn't look like my kids. There are no video games or iPods. There are no DVD players in their minivans. In fact, Kurt told me that he lives 48 hours away from the school in an entirely different state. It is nearly uh, 1,400 kilometers from here, and it is, takes nearly 48 hours. These kids are just like my kids at home. I, I look around, I see them eating lunch, and I can't even hardly believe it. They, Kids are here with hopes and dreams, each and every one of them individually. Hopes and dreams that somehow their reality will be different than the chaos that they see in their nation. See, it's amazing for me that in the midst of the chaos of the nation of India, there's a place of hope and peace. That place is here, Christ for India. The education here is top notch. In fact, these kids are reading English at about three grade levels higher than a typical student in the United States. The students at Christ for India School are taught discipline, honor, and respect. There are 375 students who live on campus, many from far away, but many from nearby who just don't have parents to care for them. As you can see, the school at Christ for India is working. We've talked to so many of these children today who come from Hindu homes and families, but because of this school, they're learning about the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ in their lives. It is incredible. This ministry is incredible. I was talking to Jameson recently, and he said to me, Matt, we can change a nation if we can touch the children. Clearly, they're doing that. The Titus family believes for the thousands of dollars it takes each year to keep this school accredited, functioning smoothly, and operational. Obviously, the children can't pay it. Each day, over 800 children show up with pockets full of faith and virtually no money. This ministry is taking care of not only just the spiritual needs, but the physical needs. We're serving about almost 3,000 meals daily by faith. We don't have one organization saying we're going to underwrite your check for all the food costs. Imagine what they could do if we partnered with them.